I have a confession to make. But before I make my confession, I have a question for you. Do you ever hear a disempowering or negative voice in your head? Do you ever put yourself down, have a voice that puts you down? Raise your hand if that resonates with you. For me, sometimes my voice in my head is really quiet, and sometimes it's really loud. And my confession is not that I have a voice, because it seems like all of you have a voice in your head. It's that, for me, the voice in my head calls me an idiot. And for the longest time, I believed this voice that was in my head, and I, I thought it was the truth. And it really put me down so many times in my life. And I started thinking about, where did this voice come from? When I started doing the work, personal development, I realized that there was actually an incident that happened in my life that, or, that had the birth or the creation of this voice. When I was in the third grade, I remember my teacher asking me to get up and read in front of the whole class. And when I got up to read, I was struggling really badly. The whole class started laughing, and the teacher thought I was making jokes in front of those 30 boys in the class. And he got pretty angry at me, and I felt so ashamed. And I remember him yelling at me and saying, Joe, sit down, you idiot. And I quickly sat down, and I vowed to myself that I would never get up to speak in public again. I was so disempowered from that incident that I really, like looking back to myself, I thought to myself, wow, this really hurt me. But I do remember feeling a little bit magical when everybody started laughing. So like there was this like thing like, oh my gosh, I'm so ashamed, but at the same time, people are laughing and it actually feels weird. Like what is this feeling? And so I started doing what any little kid does, started making everybody laugh. And I got really, really good at it. The teachers didn't like it at all. They actually got pretty upset. But I worked really hard to sound really smart and be really smart. So I was the kid in the class that got the material right away. So the teachers loved it. I was like, oh, he picked it up. He's really smart. But I had to work to get smart because I had that little voice in my head calling me an idiot constantly. So I had to work really, really hard to be the smartest. But no matter how much I knew, I still didn't feel smart. And the teachers kept getting angry at me because I would always make jokes. I would make little comments. I would make little noises. And I would draw things. I got really good at drawing. I would draw cartoons of my teachers in yoga, doing yoga in dresses. That didn't go well with the rabbis. <laughs> and so I constantly was getting punished for doing something that actually my, my class loved. Like my, the kids in the class actually loved that. I would make all these little noises when the class got really quiet. I figured out the right thing to say to get under my teacher's skin. And I just got really, really good at it. But no matter how smart I was, it's, that voice was still kind of like nagging me in the back of my head. And the only thing that I felt somewhat cured that was when people laughed. Then I heard a different voice, a voice that said, genius. <laughs> because the other voice that I was competing with, it was like, Joe, you're an idiot. You're a stupid idiot. Shame on you. And it was strong. I never knew that it was there. I just heard it. I thought it was me. It would constantly tell me, Joe, don't do that. Shame on you for doing that. But when people laugh, genius, genius, you're making people laugh. Keep doing more of that. That's good. It wasn't about the information. It was about the laughter. And what I felt was that like, when, when I laughed so hard, I felt like my soul was healing. When I saw other people laugh, I felt like their soul was healing. So there was something about subconsciously that I knew that this was the path for me, that I needed to learn about this and be better at this. And what ended up happening is I got really good at getting attention. That's, that's like what happened. As a result, I was like the, the kid, and people thought I was like this attention seeker, 
But it wasn't, for me, it wasn't about attention. It was about healing. It was about laughter. It was about connection. And so I was the guy that just made everybody laugh unintentionally. Just people would just laugh. I would do things, say things, make noises, whatever, make faces. And people would laugh. And I still had a chip on my shoulder that I wasn't smart enough, that I wasn't good enough. So when I decided to build a business, I said, I'm going to prove to the voice in my head that I'm not an idiot. And I'm going to figure out how to build a multi-million dollar business. Because then I'm going to feel smart. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn that voice off. And so I went on a mission. I started working 16 hours a day. I built one of the fastest growing companies in America. Ajax Union was featured on the Inc. 500, number 178, servicing over 1,100 clients. But the voice was still there. The voice was like, eh, this is nothing. What is this? So you built a business. Big deal. Sounded like an old Jewish lady. So what? Big deal. So you built a business. No, no, so what? So I built another business. Evergreen trains businesses. We trained over 1,000 clients on how to use LinkedIn, how to use artificial intelligence to get clients. But still, the voice was there. You need more clients. What, you only have 1,000 clients? What's wrong with you? What, are you? what are you, an idiot? You're an idiot, Joe. So I said, OK, let me go become a professional speaker. I'll overcome my fear. I joined the National Speakers Association, the NSA. I became a pro professional speaker, traveling the world, speaking, audiences, engaging, loving me, laughing constantly in a professional setting, saying professional things sometimes in an unprofessional way, but most of the time saying professional things to get people to laugh and to have fun and to connect and to actually take away something of value. Because I thought that I would somehow turn this voice off. But the more successful I became and the more things that I did in order to turn it off, the louder it got, believe it or not. And so for me, that voice started just like being so, so loud. It said, Joe, so what if you're a successful entrepreneur generating millions of dollars? So what? if you are a professional speaker traveling the world. So what if you publish five books? So what if you're an angel investor? So what if you're a business connector? So what? You're an idiot, Joe. You're a complete, total idiot. It was like almost like a, a, an uphill battle. <sighs> Your marriage is failing. You're not a good father. What's wrong with you? So I said, you know what? I'm going to hire coaches. I'm going to hire therapists. I'm going to hire mentors. I'm going to go to therapy and coaching and mentoring and courses and Tony Robbins and Landmark Forum and more and more. I even got a shaman and we did shrooms. <laughs> and then I think to myself, like, what, what the hell am I doing? I'm just going to be the best possible father that I could be to my five kids. I dedicated myself to get to know each one of them individually, to spend time with them. I got divorced reestablished my integrity with my relationships. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. I worked on my religious trauma. I went to a special doctor, did breath work and ketamine and this and that. And, blah, 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 blah. and all of a sudden, I'm like all ready to go. And I have a realization that if I believe the voice in my head that I'm an idiot, then I am an idiot. Because the voice in my head is just noise like the clouds that I can see, like the rain that I can feel. It's not me. It's not who I am. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody feels stupid. We're just human. Sometimes we make mistakes. And sometimes I do stupid things. That doesn't mean that I'm an idiot. But if I believe that voice, well, then that makes me an idiot. So I chose to create a new empowering voice, a voice that says, Joe, you're an amazing father. You're an amazing lover. You're an amazing friend. You're an amazing leader. You're an amazing entrepreneur. You're an amazing ball of energy that's only here for a short time. And in that short time, you're going to be love. You're going to be joy. You're going to be present for the people in your life. And you're going to love yourself more than anyone could possibly love you. Because if your tank is full, then you can fill up other people's tanks with laughter and with joy and with freedom. And so I'm on a mission to help a million people be able to find their voice with artificial intelligence, but I can only do that if my cup is full. I believe that the secret to living is giving, not faking and taking or waking and baking, 
although that's fun. <laughs> I believe that for me, the key to success is being present for the people in my life and loving them with all my heart. But I can't do that unless I love myself. I can't do that unless I realize that the voice in my head is not who I am. It's just noise. So with that, I want to say thank you for being with my voice. I love you.